Praise God. Glory to you, Father. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for your love and your compassion. There is no other God but you. Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you for your enlightenment. Thank you for everything that you applied and you put into your word so that we can get the victory from your word. We delight ourselves in you, Father God. We delight ourselves in your commandments. We delight ourselves in your, your righteousness. If it wasn't for you, Lord Jesus, we could not stand before the Father righteous. And we thank you for that. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. No other God but you. And as we take this adventure into your word this night, Father God, we know that you are going to open up the intricate details of your word to our understanding so that we can grab hold to those things and we can become doers of those things so that we can receive the promises that you have already predestined in your word. Thank you. We love you and we appreciate you. And I submit myself to you, Father God, spirit, soul, and body. Use my mind, use my heart, use my mouthpiece to minister your word to your people this day. And we covenant with you right now to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory for every victory that will come out of today's session. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. And I'll agree with that prayer, so amen. Turn the Bible to the book of Matthew, chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, we are, we are coming down to a close on this, Matthew chapter 6, as far as teaching on prayer, uh, the different, different integral details of prayer, and God has showed us a pattern, he showed us a pattern of how we should be praying. If you have not been listening to these teachings and actually going home, meditating over it, and then applying them to your life, you have become what the book of James says, you're just a hearer of the word and not a doer only. You didn't get all of it after you just sat here and heard me teach for 35, 45 minutes. You didn't get all of it. I promise you didn't get all of it. I've learned that through a lot of trial and error. Take the time to go home, reread it, re-listen to it, go back over it, and uh, just like uh, I've been going, I've been, I've been, I, I went to start at college a few weeks back, taking some online courses, trying to finish up my degree, and and it's almost like state your point, state your case, then don't talk no more. The Bible tells us to meditate, to mutter, over and over and over again. And I'm thinking in my head, like, how am I going to be able to state my point, state the case, just in one topic or one paragraph, and then be through? I double talk. I, I mean, I'm, a, I'm a Robinson. We naturally double talk. We just double talk. We say things two or three ten different times. <laughs> over and over again, we just say it different ways. Sometimes, sometimes we yell with it. And, well, most of the time we always yell with it. We just talk real loud. We get loud talk. So it's going to be kind of hard for me to just get right on in there and not double talk. Uh, no, say things two or three different times. What is the point I'm getting at? When you taking this word and you double talk with it, you mutter it, you meditate on it, you must meditate on it and you mutter it. You mumble it, mumble on your breath. Y'all know how to be mumbling on your breath. Can't believe she said that. You might mumble the word. God said this, God said that. What you say? I just said what God said. You just you meditate. You say it over and over and over again. God begins to reveal the different things to you. Right now, it's in the area of prayer. I have noticed just in my own personal prayer life, especially when you read scripture. This I'm just going to pull one of them out of there, where it says, um, "Thy will be done." Matthew chapter six, where it says, "Thy will be done." Thy will be done. When you say thy will be done, you all you automatically are referring to this word. Submit. 
It's God's will, not my will. Some of us, we actually think that our way of doing things is better than God's. How do I know that? How do we say that? I said, we, we say it like this. Well, I believe, I feel, how many of y'all, I thought, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I heard it said this way. Well, what does God have said about it? So now you are submission, you are submitting uh, under what God has to say about it. Thy will be done. And, and, um, and I want you all to take your time, to take a moment, flip over to the book of uh, Luke. You're already there, Matthew. Go to the book of Luke, chapter 11. Chapter 11. Because now we we are about to get ready and start touching in on the other aspects of prayer. You know, like binding and loosening. You know, the prayer or the prayer petition, the prayer of agreement. We about to get ready and start tapping into some of those, some of those di different things of prayer. Because all of those different types of prayer is based on. You receiving from God. You're praying and you start to receive from God. How do I know that? In Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. Everybody there? I want you to look at verse 1. Now, I want you, if you take the time to go read these things, You'll see that these are two separate occasions where Jesus is teaching on prayer. But at the end of this verse, at the end of this verse, when you get down to the bottom of it, he starts talking about receiving from him, asking for stuff. Watch what it says, Luke chapter 11, look at verse 1. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. Verse 2. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven. Almost sound cool. Kind of same thing, don't it? Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. As in heaven, so in earth. Difference right there. Hold your finger right there. Go to book Matthew, chapter 6. I don't want you to see, you got to see the difference. You got to see the difference. Look what he says. Verse 9, after this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Flip back over. Look what Jesus, look what he said, Jesus, how Jesus said over him. Thy will be done in earth so in heaven okay I mean so in earth as that will be done as in heaven so in earth so not let you know right that is two different separate occasions same meaning but two different times where Jesus just said it different Jesus never ever 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 that I've noticed so far he and never ever 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 tried to teach from memory. I'm going to let that one sink in. Think about it. How hard would it be I'm sitting up here teaching you all this sermon and then all of a sudden if I have to go over here to this church or I have to go over here to this place or I have to go over here and I try to teach and I try to teach the same exact way that use the same wording every time I teach it. Get too confusing. Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit, and how He said it, how He said it, it just may, it, but it may, it may, it may mean the same thing. That's how I know it's two different times what Jesus was teaching on. Go back on Luke chapter eleven. Holy Spirit, find the finger there. Look what He says. Well, look what He says. Verse three: Give us this day, by day, our daily bread. Yep. Totally different. 
but mean the same thing. Wake up! Open your eyeballs up. Why y'all sitting up there going to sleep for? You ain't tired. What's wrong with y'all? You ain't come up here to go to sleep. Look what it says in verse 4. And forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. Different. Totally different. But the same. Two different teachings. Look what it says. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Wow. Look what he says, very next verse though. And he said unto them, which of you shall have a friend? Oh, hold on. What? What did Jesus talk about? Oh, which of you? Hold on. Go back over to Matthew. Don't y'all see the difference now? Look what he said. What, what would he say in Matthew? What did he say in Matthew? Forgive, for if we forgive, he said. But lead, but he said, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. But over here, he starts teaching on a parable. Two different times when Jesus was teaching the same thing. Look, what, let's go read this parable now. Luke chapter eleven. Go back on Luke chapter eleven. Let's go read this parable. And he said unto them, Which of you have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are, are with me in bed. I cannot arise and give thee. What did Jesus say in verse 8? I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his what? Importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. Break it down. Watch this. Are you through? Sit up. Let's go. You tripping. Sit up. You ain't coming here to go to sleep. No. No, 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 no. Look what he says. Look what he says. Which of you have a friend? You got somebody come into, come into town. My cousins come in town. They come in town. I don't have. They just showed up. <laughs> you got relatives just show up. Been there and done that. You ain't went grocery shopping yet. It ain't really time to go grocery shopping. Not for you and your house. You have plenty enough in your house, but you ain't have enough for them to eat. All of a sudden, you go next door to your buddy's house. He your friend. You expect your friend. You know your friend just went grocery shopping, so you're not going to know. Hey, man. I, hey, can you give me three loaves of bread so I can make some peanut butter and jelly sandwich for my buddies? So for my cousins and stuff? Man, I'm in the bed, man. It's 1 o'clock in the morning. Are you tripping? No, I ain't getting about the bed. I want you to catch that. I want y'all to catch that. Look what he says. I want you to catch what he says. You there, Luke? Look what he says. And he, from verse 7, and he from within shall answer and say, I ain't getting about the bed. No, man, go about your business somewhere. I cannot give thee. Watch what he says. I say unto you, Though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his what? Importunity, he going to get up and go give him whatever he needs. That word importunity is key. It's key to you receiving from God. It's key. It is very key word. Let's break down the word importunity. Importunity means to almost antagonize. But yet not antagonize. It means to consistently 
not ask for, but to consistently make a request upon. You're not asking for it, but you are making a request. Lord, I request, I, Lord, I need this. You said, if I give, you said in the book of Psalm 37, you said, if I delight myself in you, you'll give me the desires of my heart. Notice, it is a valid need. Notice the scripture, how the scripture plays it out. Look what he says. Go back up to verse 5. And he said, which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. What did he say? Lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine is in, in his journey is come, and I have nothing to set before him. The food that he is requesting, it ain't just for him and his foe and no more. Who is it for? It's for somebody else. Remember, it is the Lord that God, Deuteronomy, it is the Lord that God that giveth the power to get wealth, to establish His covenant. What is God's covenant? God's covenant ain't just for you to be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and all your needs met, but it's for you and somebody else as well. So you have to consistently be making a request unto God. How do you let your request be made known unto God? Because every single day after you've already asked for it, you thank God for it. That you already have it. Lord, I thank you that you have sent the money in. Lord, I thank you. Father God, soon I believe, Father God, I just know that the money's coming. Father God, you are sending unexpected wealth my way. You are sending people across my path to get this thing done, Father God. Father God, I just thank you. I've already asked you for every day, Lord. I thank you that it is coming to pass. Father God, I thank you that the vision is being fulfilled. People are following you faithfully, holy and holy. Lord Jesus, I just thank you that my children are saved. I just thank you that they are walking in your way, Father God. Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, praise and glorify your name. It's already been done. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're showing me how to get it done. Thank you, Father God, for winning adventures. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father God, I thank you for sending the money this way. I thank you, Father God, for financing this thing in the kingdom. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, you are so good. You do that every single day. It won't be long till it shows up. You've already paid the tithe. You've already sold the seed, which is outside the tithe. You're walking in holiness. You're correcting your flaws and your faults. If you do commit sin, you're getting back over in righteousness by confessing and forsaking the sin. You're walking in love. You're calling those things that be not as though they were, yet the manifestation still hasn't showed up yet. Satan will begin to make you think that the manifestation won't show up. But what does the God say? Yet, for his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. I want y'all really, really think about that. See, there is a there is a space. A lot of us are looking for miracles to happen. Miracles are unknown manifestations of something that seem to be impossible. Like, it's kind of hard to explain. The only thing that you can say is God. Like if a person got cancer today, terminal cancer, but then tomorrow they're healed. Miraculously, the cancer is gone. That's a miracle. Whether it took from the time of from cancer to no cancer, whether it was one second or whether it was ten years. Either which way it go, it's no difference to God. 
Why? Because now faith is. But God says in Mark 11, if you believe you receive it, you'll have what you say. You'll have it. It may take five years for it to actually manifest in the world, but you had it over here from the moment you believe that you received it. This guy obviously knew his buddy was going to give it to him. Why? Because he was full aware of the relationship that he already had with his friend. He was already in friendship, fellowship with his friend. You know how it is when you're talking to your buddy. No, I ain't giving you nothing. No. And you, Come on, man. Why are you playing, man? <laughs> I remember when I rededicated my life back to Christ. And I had just got through going through. I was, I was dealing with a lot of sickness and disease at the time. A lot of sickness. Well, not a lot of disease, but a lot of sickness. And I can remember the story when my mama had told me how God had healed her of rheumatoid arthritis. And, you know, that stayed with me even for years. I mean, I didn't really too much put too much faith in it, but I just believed it. And, you know, I, you know my mom, because she, I remember she was, she was dealing with a lot of pain in her hands and stuff. And all of a sudden, she believed God healed. And all of a sudden, was, she didn't talk about the pain no more. It just was gone. Well, so, with that being said, I, that stuck with me out through the years. And I stayed sick all the doggone time. And I can remember I had just had major surgery on my throat. I had... A lot of different things going on and all of a sudden I can remember I was in pain and the healing wasn't coming fast enough and it was like three or four days after the surgeon I was in a lot of pain a lot a lot of pain and I ain't gonna go too much in detail about it but the but the, the end of the upshot to the whole thing I was landing on the couch one day and all of a sudden I remember God healed my mom I knew God as a healer because of what he did for my mom. But me and the Lord didn't have a relationship. <laughs> I, we, we, we'll tell you a bit. We was in, we was in relationship because I was born again, but we was nowhere near in fellowship at all. Not through God's fault, my fault. And I remember kindly going to the Lord. And it, all this happened from within me and from within. And I said, Lord, Lord, take this pain away from me. I'm hurt. And I can remember plain as day, he said, no, because you won't do what I told you to do. And I said, just as fast as he said that, it's like I got smart mouth. <laughs> I said, Lord, quit playing. And he said it in a nice, calm, stern, loving voice. No, you won't do what I told you to do. <clears throat> Broke down, started crying. Here it is, 15 years later, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to all y'all in here. 15 years later. Healed from that dumb stuff. Healed. Healed. Ever so often, Satan to try to mess with me. And I had to rebuke it. No, Satan, you a lie. You a lie. No, by Jesus stripes, I'm healed. Doing what God told me to do. Doing what God told me to do. So, what's, what's going on? I have developed a relationship, not I mean a fellowship with the Father. I've developed one with Him. I've developed a fellowship with the Father. He will heal you if you believe it. He will supply your need if you believe Him. He will give you the desires of your heart. If you are in fellowship with him. Because if he gives you the desires of your heart. Your, and you're in fellowship with him. And he give you the desires of your heart. Your heart ain't going to go to do the wicked stuff. You can't hide nothing from God. I'm going to say that again. You can't hide nothing from God. This guy. He knew. His friend was going to supply his need. Why? He was in fellowship with him. He knew 
knew if he kept on making a request unto him, his friend would get up out that bed and come and give him whatever he wanted. Man, you were some. No, man, you should have got up out the bed in the first place. Y'all have heard the stories about how other people make the statements all the time. They say, they say, God ain't never late. He's always right on time. You might have to wait <laughs> for a while, but God is always on time. Sometimes you wish God would have done it last year. But last year wasn't now. Last year was last year, but last year wasn't now. What's the now got doing anything? Now faith is. There's always a specific point in time where it's supposed to start manifesting. You don't want something to come from God out of its timing. Because if it comes to you out of its timing and it shows up now and it's out of timing, it's going to hurt you and everybody else around you. I want you to think about that. Think about some of y'all out there, you would, you would love to have a million dollars. You would love to have a million dollars. Some of y'all couldn't handle a million dollars. You wouldn't know what to do with it. Some of y'all end up smoking it up, drinking it up, sexing it up, doping it up, movieing it up. I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't do dope, but you go to every doggone movie that come out. You buy everything, every, if you see, think about it, here it is, I mean, you, years ago, the very first game console that came out was Atari. <laughs> I never owned one, never. We never owned one when it came out. And after Atari, it was a good, what, six, seven years before, I know, mean, oh Lord, six, seven, eight years before the next game console came out. And then when it first came out, it was Nintendo. Man, Ed, Ned, everybody went crazy when they went by Nintendo's cost a hundred and fifty dollars. And people were like, I ain't buying another one of them things. And then the next Nintendo came out. It was a hundred and seventy-five dollars. All the years went by. Every time I look around, I call hold to it after the third or fourth one. It, it was what? It was all. Uh, it was all. Uh, Nintendo, Nintendo 60, Nintendo 64, it was Sega Genesis, then it was the GameCube, and then it was this, and I, after about the third or fourth one, I was like, watch, they're going to start calling, every time I look around, they're going to come out with something new, somebody going to come up with something new, now they got the Xbox One, now they got the PlayStation 4, watch, it's going to be the Xbox 3.652 in about 10 more years, and it's going to be the PlayStation 9.37. It's going to constantly keep coming out with something new. I am want you to think about that. Why? What's going on? It's going to always be something newer out there just to keep your attention off of God. It's going to always be something new in movies just to grab your attention. It's going to always be something new in the supermarket, so you can go buy it. It's gonna be steak created in the new package. Buy this uh, perfectly dazzling, sizzling sirloin. It tastes better than a regular nine ounce sirloin. And you're gonna be like, oh yeah, buy it, twenty five dollars. Burn it up. And some of y'all need. I only, I'm trying, not trying to offend nobody, pain, trying to offend nobody. Some of y'all can miss a couple of meals. Because your blood pressure way up here. Cholesterol level way up here. Well, you got to live. You only live once. Yeah, you can enjoy yourself, but you can't enjoy yourself to the point the way you hurt and you're going against God's word. God says he wishes above all things that you be in health. I'm 41 years old now. When I get 51, I want to see, I want to be healthy. And when I get 51, I'll be looking for 61. I want to be 61 and healthy. Not in and out of hospitals all the time. Not taking all different kinds of medication. I want to be healthy. Some of y'all need to teach that to your children. 
so that as they get older, they can be healthy, not battling with sickness and disease all the doggone time. God says his word, Lord, Father, God, I believe that your word, you said that, uh, you know, we serve thee. You'll take, you'll take sickness and disease away from Mr. B and you'll bless our bread and our water. Yeah, God will do that if you serve him. But you can't go sit up and eat the fat back pork chop knowing dog and well is going, Lord, Father God, please take the offense out of this pork chop so I can, so I can sit down and eat it. No, it goes against your DNA, your body type. Somebody else might be able to eat it for 89 years. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, what it? What, what's one guy? What's one guy? Uh, George Burns. I'm going to use him. He's the greatest. And he's dead. He's passed on now. That man later be 100 years old. Never an ounce of cancer in his body oh, that, so that we know. Bad. And every time you look around, George Burns had a big old fat long cigar <laughs> sticking out of his mouth. That was him. Right. But on the average, some of y'all, guess what? You smoke one cigarette, <laughs> you're going to end up with cancer. Got emphysema all in the lung. Doctor that told you nine times, stop smoking. Other doctors say, well, ain't nothing wrong with smoking. Had somebody had come up and tell me, you know, I'm pregnant. And, uh, and uh, I ain't no wrong. Doctor told me that uh, if I quit smoking, it would be more detrimental to the baby if I was to keep smoking a cigarette. Let me get on back in this word, man. Y'all can have me gone over here. God said, look at that man said, because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he what? Needeth. Key word. Needeth. Everybody repeat that to me. My God shall supply all my needs according to his bank account. Not based on your bank account, not according to your, based on your, your 401k, not based on your savings plan, based on his, his riches in glory. By Christ Jesus. Why would we say by Christ Jesus? Because if it wasn't for Christ Jesus making this available to us through salvation, your needs would go unmet. God initially saw the first need and he met it. What first need? The need of a savior. Okay, watch, watch this. Hold your finger in Genesis because my time is almost up. Go all the way to the book of Genesis. Go to the book of Genesis. kind of ironic. We go on to this and we was my wife my wife was teaching our son this this morning. He was reading this this morning. I'll go to Genesis chapter 3. Go to Genesis chapter 3. Look what it says. Uh, look at verse 22. Look at verse 22. Genesis chapter 3 verse 22. And the, Lord, and the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now least he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life, and eat and live forever. Watch this. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he came. So he drove out the man. And placed at the eat plate, and he, oh Lord, go out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of a, uh, east of the garden of Eden, cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. What was going on? God had just told, I mean, probably previously told Adam to not eat the fruit off a certain tree. Satan showed his ugly head up. Satan gonna tell you part truth. And a part lie. God did say, "Don't eat off the tree, least I mean, and, and uh, you'll surely die." Satan showed up and said, "Hey, you won't die," which that part is a lie. The second part of it is, what's going on? God, Adam, Satan said, 
God, for God knows that you will become like him. One, they were already like him. But then Satan added another truth to it. You'll know good and evil. Which lets us know the only thing Adam was ever supposed to experience was good. His needs always being met. Only thing Adam was ever supposed to experience was needs always been met. Never a need going unmet. He was only supposed to experience goodness, period. So when, so when Adam decided to go eat the tree, off the tree, yeah, Adam did become like God, started to know evil, but what's going on? He fell in that state of sin, of a, a place of not having fellowship with God. Still had a relationship, and just like a husband and wife. When one or two of them, one, one person or the other in a relationship, the person go commit adultery, Within the within the family within the, the husband and wife thing, it could be either one of them. I ain't gonna pick single letting nobody out. Now they still in a relationship because they still married, but fellowship is broken. Why? No more trust. So now here Adam is got a relationship with God, but no more fellowship. So now Adam do no evil. So what's the need? Adam now needs a savior. He needs a savior. So what did God do? Because God loved him. Look what he did. Verse 24. So he drove out the man. Why? What did God say? At the end of verse 22. He said, At least he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. So wait a minute. No, no God didn't love him. Why he just let Adam just go eat the fruit? Then he would have he would live forever. He would no 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 no. He would have lived forever in that fallen state, out of fellowship with God. Notice we just talked about the dude, the other dude in the book of Luke. Dude had a relationship with his friend. He knew his friend was gonna help him in his time of need. That's why we kind of talked about submission. When you come under the will of what God wants, you become um, a person who, depending upon God, I need you to help me. I can't do this without you. I'm submitting myself to you. What you want, God says, I'm going to take care of you. And I'm learning God is not a deadbeat dad. He is going to supply the need. And so he drove him out. Why? Because he loved him. He didn't want Adam to stay in that fallen state. Because if Adam would have stayed in that fallen state, we would have never came into existence. Adam would have stayed in a sinful state forever. Thus, therefore, even no matter how much Jesus would have wanted to come into the earth, he couldn't because Adam was the only person who was supplying the seed at the time. So for the sake and his God's love for all of mankind leading up to this point, God said, get out of this garden to protect Adam and the seed of Christ. Who glory to God. <laughs> so God says, you just make your request be made known by Christ Jesus. I'm going to take care of your need. And, oh man, this is good, man. Father God, I love you. So he drove out the man and placed it at the east of the garden, Eden, a garden of Eden, cherubim and the flaming sword to keep Adam out. To keep of the well tree of life. I'm going to let you on a little secret. Those cherubims are not there anymore. People still looking for those cherubims for the tree of life. The tree of life is not there anymore. I mean the tree of life is not there anymore. 
I'm going to say it again. The tree of life itself is not there anymore. So where Guess where the tree of life is now? The kingdom of God is within you. The tree of life is in you. Jesus says, I am the branch. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus now is that tree of life. He's in you. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and you confess him, you are taking a bite off that tree. That's why you feed off the word. Man should not live amongst bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Man, it's good, man. This is so good. Go back over to Luke. Go. Let's, let's close it out. We're going we, we to we gonna be getting to some needs being met now, man. It's time to get some needs being met. Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. What do you say? Let's just, we're going we're gonna to just read it real quick. We're going to get two minutes here. Look what he says, verse 9. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a, for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he for egg ask Oh Lord, if he should ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then be evil, why do you say evil? Because they weren't regenerated yet. Know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall your heavenly Father give the holy tree of life, I mean spirit, to them that ask him? In the book of Matthew, chapter 7 through 11, you can just go read on your own time. At the end of that verse, is Jesus says, if, I say, if, you, if you being a father know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give things to them that ask him? That's Matthew chapter 7, 7 through 11. Give good things. Not just the Holy Spirit, but things. Why? So that your need can be met. When you come up under and you submitting to the will of God, God has no problem with giving you things. Because he knows as long as you keep him first. Now the things will try to grow up and choke it out so that the, so that the word become unfruitful in you. But it's up to you to make sure you still keep God as number one. Y'all heard me say this around here so many times. Every single day, Satan is going to challenge you to put something else first before God. And you have to reconfess and remake Jesus the Lord of your life every day. Just so that those things won't grow up and choke out the word. That's good, man. Learn. How to follow Jesus Christ faithfully, holy, and holy. Learn. Y'all hear me out there? Learn. You hear me in here? Learn to follow Jesus Christ faithfully, holy, and holy. I'll see y'all next time.